the day's not uh, got up yet ready for combining so we've got the sugar beet needs spraying it needs a fungicide on this particular field we're in we're going to harvest it a bit later probably end of october so it needs protecting for disease and we're also giving it some trace elements so the theory is that the better crops are the ones you leave because they're the ones that can put more weight on so this sugar beet crop is quite good and usually september october it does put a lot of weight on so we're going to harvest a field early behind me over that hedge and uh, that one will not get a fungicide because it needs time on it to uh, to work and be beneficial so that's why we're doing this one because it is going to be left and then we're going to do another one as well up on the heath on the light land because that one will be harvested in uh, in december and january this is a field of sugar beet we are going to harvest early probably the uh, 20th 20th 25th of september time the factory opens the 21st that's just a footpath through the crop that I was explaining about in the previous video and this sugar beet will be stored on this concrete that's just some uh, wood chip that we thinned a little spinny out in the winter time and had it chipped so we've got three of these concrete storage areas on the farm we just had this one extended a couple of years ago and the idea of these is that sugar beet crop from there will come on this concrete so once it's here the weather then doesn't affect us delivering to the factory so the lorries can come down our farm tracks there and uh, collect the sugar beet that's stored on here without damaging the fields anymore the soil and then they'll take it back out the farm track through the yard onto the main road you can see the traffic there and about 10 11 miles we're into newark into the processing factory so that's uh, that's really good and low food miles well, that's the oats finished thank goodness not been an easy crop this year with the lack of sun Nice clutch of uh, young English partridge on the stubbles. The last couple of days I've been driving a fantastic tractor that takes me back to my younger farming days. It's been on this 16 ton uh, Bailey trailer and here we are. It is a Ford 8210. Fantastic specimen of a tractor. This was new in 1990, so quite a few years old, but I must say it still drives very, very well. And for it to handle this 16 ton Bailey trailer, uh, pulling it and tipping it hydraulic capacity, it uh, must have been one hell of a tractor in its day. I had uh, one of these, I remember in the early farming days, along with Ford 7810s, 6610s, brilliant tractors. This particular one is, uh, is turboed, here it's got a straight through exhaust as well it's not mine it belongs to uh, one of the farmers we contract farm for and uh, he's got this and uh, another another uh, Ford but brilliant tractor and when you look at the back end really simple easy to put the pipes in and out under pressure but it's just a fantastic tractor the only problem with it is its forward speed top speed is 17.8 sorry 17.8 miles an hour and when you look on the on this a17 that we're, we've got here this busy road here it's the busiest single carriageway a road in lincolnshire sorry in the country according to the police uh, we get a few queues behind but uh, brilliant tractor just while i'm around the back of the trailer interesting to show you i've had these magnetic signs made up and they are great for just promoting British farming and British food production. And they're, they're great because you can just take them off this trailer uh, in the summertime when we stop using it, put it on other machinery. The only thing is, is our combine's got um, fiberglass side panels and so obviously it won't go on there. We have to have a sticker. But brilliant for advertising and promoting British agriculture. And here we've got hashtag your harvest. If you look at that on social media, lots of different farming stories. Um, uh... 
brilliant tractor. You can see the dash, and here is the dual power switch on the floor. There we are, see it doubles up the number of gears. And in its day, this cab was really, really quiet. I think it's about 78 decibels, and uh, modern tractors, they're not that much quieter now. So we're cultivating some land that's coming winter wheat again. This will be the fifth time in a row it's come uh, wheat or winter wheat. And this machine here is a 2004, so it's a few years old. But on our heavy soils, on our difficult clays that have 55% clay soil, it does a cracking job. We've actually raked the field. You can see the lines there with straw at an angle with the straw rake to spread the straw out better. And we've got front row of discs. That's mixing the straw and the soil. Then got a row of loosening legs there. And they're in the ground, probably eight inches deep. Then we have a press roll. that firms and consolidates the ground, ready for the next set of discs that chop a bit more. And then lastly, we have the culture press. This is a machine that I only bought second hand a few months ago, so this is the first time we've used it. We've got the times in at the front, these are spring times that are new to us. We've had ridgy times before, and then a double row of DD packers at the finish to level it off and firm it. And then here, we won't do any more to this field now. We'll let the weather do the rest, and we'll drill it at an angle to how we cultivate here. So you can see there, that is last year's tram line. So we always go at a slight angle to keep the fields level and then that's the area, that's the line we'll drill at. Today is Tuesday, August the 31st and we've just started this project of converting these stables which haven't been used for a couple of years. We're converting them into farm office, meeting room, toilet uh, block, staff yard room and also a harvest uh, accommodation um, area. And here was the feed room for the stables. So that wall there is coming out, which is this wall the other side here. And this was the tack room. So this is gonna become the meeting room and office here. That window there is gonna be uh, cut out there, a window in that wall. That wall is, is coming out to extend and make uh, the large office. This door here, will become the main door into the office and that door is going to stay. So we're going to have a door outside to a, a grassed area or, or concrete area where we can sit outside. Next door here is going to become the yard room and the staff area where we can have the breaks. And next door is the toilet block with a shower as well. And then the last stable we're going to convert into accommodation um, for a uh, harvest student or even an overflow um, for the house. So um, quite a bit going on. Hopefully it won't take any more than uh, three months. It's all internal work. There's no structural work as such to do. It's just internal. And, and these are the plans. Hopefully you can see those. And that's uh, what we aim to do with it. So uh, it'll be quite good when it's done. So we've got a, a nice office and a good meeting room and hopefully we'll probably let the meeting room out for uh, the local training group uh, as well. Just come to Bailey Trailers again to pick up some parts that they've cut out for me with a laser and uh, always interesting when you come here and you see the work going on and now the trailers that they build. They build somewhere in the region of 35 trailers a week so it's a fantastic business when you look at what we're doing. So just back from uh, Bailey Trailers with the profiles and these are what I picked up. 
So these are what they cut out with their laser and that's another part of it. Just brilliant how the neat edges you get with it and uh, much better than uh, using gas or anything else. So that's going to be welded onto that, like that. And when we've got that done, it's for us, it's for the scraper rail on our Simba uh, Express machine. So this is the Simba Express that we bought last year. It's in cracking condition. We've done a few bits to it and the rams here Ian put on because that was just a turnbuckle and it was very difficult to alter the angle and the depth of those discs and so now it's all hydraulic and then these are the profiles you've just seen welded the two together got some box section making the new scraper rail and the old scraper rail scrapers used to be fastened on like that down there and then all the soil would all bung up up here and it would be a, a just take it difficult to pull. So we've designed these ourselves a few years ago, building this onto here and it will make this work a lot better. So those bolt on to there like that, a lot lower down and it keeps it clean. And uh, there's a lot more room there for the soil to, to uh, come out when it's, when it's wet. So that's it, uh, what we're doing, another job in the workshop. Mantra 1.5. Mirador Extra is 0 0.7. 0 0.7. Yeah. Lines are gone. Yeah. Opera is 3. Yeah. Peck Tiga, oh, that's naught. Propel Expro 1.6. This time of year, we go through all the stock in the chemical store and we start off the new year with everything correct. So here is one of our stock centers, and this is our own. This is where we run our main contract farms from. And here is the board that's got the products in stock and the actual literage. And we know the actual liters because every time we uh, go out applying the products and we're filling the sprayer up and we have part cans left over, we always write on what's in these cans. So it's very easy actually to then update the boards. And so this is our own stock center and these are our own remnants, if you like. They're all part cans, whereas all here, the floor is where we normally put all the full cans when we have deliveries. And then this here is one of the stock centers um, from our main contract farm, the largest one we do. He has his own stock center and he has his own boards with products in stock. And it's much easier doing it like this so that it's really good to know that whenever we look on Gatekeeper, the field record program we use, whatever that says we have in stock, actually here in the chemical store, it is actually correct. I'm just going around some of one of my pals' fields, Richard Haywood at Navenbury. We're gonna be drilling his, planting his oil seed rate for him starting tomorrow. Got some Anglian water sewage sludge there that uh, needs spreading and then it'll be worked in and cultivated in. And this is the obviously the human waste. And before this was spread on fields to improve organic matter, this was tipped in the North Sea to get rid of it. So it's a fantastic product, but the Environment Agency have brought out these regulations um, only two or three weeks ago, a month ago, to say that they are banning the spreading of organic manures, and this is classed as an organic manure. So animal waste, farmyard manure, slurries, things like that, they're banning, but yet they're the best form of nutrients to improve organic matter. So it's, uh, it's just ludicrous that Environment Agency are doing this when the government are saying to us that we need to improve our soils, we need to look after the environment, and so the Environment Agency are saying we can't um, use this anymore after this year. Anyway, that's a battle we've got this winter. But this particular field, stubble, it's five and a half um, uh, hectares. We're going to be putting all seed rape in here tomorrow. So here we are loading the sewage sludge into the huge spreaders. And of course, this is human waste. And for those of you who don't think it's right and it's getting into the water, you just need to think that every time you sit on the toilet and you pull that chain or pull that lever to flush, that is not the end of the problem. It has to go somewhere. It used to go in the sea, which of course is not right. So now putting it onto land, into soil to improve organic matter is the most cost-effective, environmentally 
friendly way of dealing with it and it improves our soil structure. So a fantastic product and this is just how it's got rid of and how it helps improve our soils. Full of phosphate, nitrogen, sulphur and a whole range of trace elements and of course organic matter that you cannot buy in a bag. So here we are spreading the sewage sludge. You can see how the machine's crabbing. And then this particular farmer is the one we're drilling rate right for and he's disking it in and incorporating it, which is what we should do by regulations. You can see there the machine crabbing. getting a really good spread pattern. So that's the bag of seed. There is, excuse me Frankie, let's have a look at the label. 23 and a bit kilograms. Interesting, it says Country Production UK, EU, role, EU rules and standards. Yet we're out of the EU, so while we have to abide by those standards, that's a mystery, that one. Anyway, um, this is Variety Campus, oilseed rape, and uh, the seed treatment there, Silas ST, which apparently, according to this, is a growth promoter and root um, stimulant. So we'll see whether that works. And that is the seed. Normally it's black, but this seed treatment's made it a silvery blue. So that's it into the hopper. So now we are planting the oil seed rape. This is with the machine that we've converted in the workshop at home. We've got 11 legs, low disturbance legs that are working in the soil. They're creating tilt, but also bringing moisture up to the top and loosening any compaction. We have the seed that is in that hopper being blown down those little black tubes. You can just see there in front of that roller. And they're in line with the leg, which is there. We then have the rubber roller firming and consolidating it. We can put fertiliser on through that bar in between the two rollers, but we're not doing at the moment. And then that final DD roller firm consolidates it down at the back. So, doing a really good job. But this ground has been disked to incorporate the sewage sludge that's just been spread. Every four years we have our field soils tested. And this is the time now we do them in the autumn. We try to do them all the same period uh, of the year and we're testing for for phosphate potash uh, magnesium and we're also doing organic matter this time we've done organic matter tests in the past but not uh, in uh, proper zones like we're doing here so all these fields have been mapped and zoned for sand silt and clay content which is fascinating when you see the levels we have because on this farm quite a lot of our fields here have a clay content of, of in the mid 50s so looking at soil testing here, how does this, uh, how does this machine work? Right round, keeping the zones following the GPS. Yeah. The blue ones are set for which zones are very done. Right, yeah. Yellow is what I mean. And then sometimes there'll be a green one, which is the next one next to go to. So, so each zone won't be a hectare or anything? That it's and it's it's how you Soil is right. Oh yeah, when yeah. When it was scanned. So you might have A and C. Yeah. Could be the exact same, but you've got two different. Right. And so, how many samples per zone do you take? Twenty-four. Right. And then, and then, is are all these samples here collected? All twenty-four samples are congregated into one. Yeah. Yeah. And they'll get into a bag. Ten bags. Yeah. And then they'll get set off. Right, okay, can we just have a look at that working, please? That 
that's it. And that's simple as that. And we go along like that, and then we can, and then there's the soil cores in there. And that's when they then go into the bank. So this is something we do, and this is how we check the soil content. And it's important because all the crops have certain requirements. And so we try and match those requirements with what's in the soil already. With Richard who's rape we're drilling at the minute and one of his neighbours is drilling next door and this is using a Clayton drill. doing a good job. We're just having a look at this drill and getting the ins and outs of it from Stephen Calder. Oh, there you go. <laughs> All ready for Warney's Weekly Waffle. So, interesting when you're looking at these points. Hey Stephen, what's the idea of this then? Right. That loosens it. So that's the loosens it. Yeah, because I've got that and as deep as I can get it. Yeah. I mean, because it's, it's not a subsoil. No. So don't use it as subsoil. It's not a subsoil. It just loosens the band and then it blows the seam either side of where it's loosened it. Ah, so that's why that's why it's banding it like that. So it, it, it band sews it into rows like that. See how deep. This drill's four metres wide, but it's uh, it's doing a good job, to be honest. It's not what you call heavy land, but it's certainly not uh, not easy working land. But it's, it is actually doing it a good job, and it'll be interesting to see. I'll come back in this field throughout the winter to see what sort of job it's uh, it's doing. But I've never really seen one of these drills work close up, but it's, it's, I'm impressed. Yeah, look at that. That's how deep I'm going. Yeah. Crikey. And that's in front of every that's every row. Every row. You see, just and it blows the seed. You have a job to see rate right, yeah, the seed there, aren't yeah. you? And it's blowing the seed and the fertilizer and mixing it in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, good. But it's like you say, it's a learning curve, this no-till job. Yeah, it is. And it's a steep one as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting when it's wet, but like you said. So we're back out on the barleys. It's Thursday evening, about six o'clock. And uh, we had a little bit of sun earlier, but the sun's now gone in. And it just shows because if we push the combine on to get any sort of speed, it starts to wrap like that. You can just see. And it just shows the straws hardly fit. We need some sun. If we had some sun come out, it would be different altogether. Yes, I thought I'd got one of my neighbours arrived for a load of barley, and then I suddenly realised we've got our John Deere that Reuben wanted to try. Reuben is our sprayer and combine operator, been with us since the year last April and wanted to give it a go. So this is going to be interesting to see how he performs alongside the combine when he's used to being sat on it, instructing the trailer drivers where to be. So, Frankie, what do you think he's doing? How's he getting on? Well, we're 
we haven't spilt any over the back door yet. But there's plenty of time. We're now putting the scraper um, scrapers on onto the new rail that Ian's made. This is the amended one. The sides are being cut off here below the bolts to make it thinner so that the soil drops out through there when it gets full and when it's a bit sticky. And then the scrapers that go on on the end Got one there like that, that hugs that DD, that ring, so it cleans it. So as it's coming round, and it'll be going that way, the saw comes up, hits that and drops down, so it doesn't get anywhere near this top frame that it used to do, and it all used to ball up underneath here and block, and then it acted like a brake. So we've got the trials combined back, and we're now into some other winter wheat trials and this is Agri with their combine. So all these are one little trial each time the combine stops. That's the trial done. And they're doing all the sampling and weighing inside the camp. And that's why we've got Angus driving and Sophia sat in the seat doing the sampling. If you just see how small the combine is compared to the ones that we normally use, but the cost of these is uh, really high with all the technology and the weighers on it. And the information from here is used for Agri, the company we do the trials with. We get a lot of information out of it as well. And also these plots, when they're growing in the season, we have open days and we get lots of farmers will come to it and look throughout the season and they'll actually decide on varieties grown that they grow on their own farm from what they see here in the trials and from the results that we get from these trials when it's all assembled. Right, now in the cab of this trials combine that is uh, about 180,000 pounds with all the technology on it. And those are the trials we've got. So how many trials have we got here all together? Two trials in this field. So Angus is explaining we've got uh, 46 different um, reps. Is there with four? 46 different treatments. Yeah. Three reps on varieties that have had treatments on it. Just 46 different treatments on that so this is winter wheat that was planted last autumn and uh, we've got done it all the same with our, our sprayer apart from we've missed the areas uh, and they've been treated with a with an independent small what do you call it N not knapsack but um, uh, oh no we with these we have actually sprayed these we sprayed, these. sprayed these and we've left them untreated we've got an untreated area on the on the front of the field across there so just looking at the technology here angus what have we what we got on the screen so on the top left i've got each individual cycle that runs through our system so it runs through at two and a half kilos at a time yeah and then it just adds it all up to create one big cycle so you can see i've got one to ten is my 10 cycles for that single plot, which equals 23 kilos in that last one. It does the same for the moisture, and that's just a test weight. On the right, that's just each individual plot and the data I've got, so I'll just make sure nothing's going wrong in the combine. And this is just my field plan, to make sure I'm in the right ah, place. Ah, make sure you're in the right area. Yeah, yeah, great. And Sophia, what's your job here? What are you doing then? Um, I'm a scholarship student, so I started a couple of months ago, and I'm learning about all the trials, really. So I do plant science at university and I'm just being well, shown what to do. With well, it. with a great company. <laughs> yeah. So so in the, inside the cab here, we've got this pipe here that, that is actually taking a, what, a small selection, a small part of the it's sample. about a kilo of the, of the sample of the whole plot. Right, yeah. And, 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 that, and that's it in there. And then every bag is, is labelled and it's all got, it says the plot number 
obviously led them trials are here and so you sophia you you put it you put your little bags under there yeah collecting the sample make sure i've got them in the, they're all in the right order for me and then just fold them up and that's when we got a bag full we'll drop at the end and then when these are all finished when you finish here where do these samples go uh, they'll go back to the farm yeah and then we'll take them either then we sample for analysis what we do a specific weight thousand grain each treat, uh, each trial has got different things that needs done to it. Yeah. And sometimes they're sent off to different labs. Yeah. Because that will just make true or proteins or things. And then like these sites are compared to other sites as well. Yeah. Yeah. Usually yeah. With the variety yeah. Yeah. And have, I'm on the straw rake this morning. It's Saturday, and uh, we're in the field of spring barley, and it hasn't spread it very well. You can see the straw is in lines up and down the field. The combine hasn't spread it full width. So I'm just going crossway on with the rake and you just see the sort of job it's, it's doing. It's spreading it nicely. We're going to put a cover crop on here uh, this afternoon so it's just spreading this nicely to enable that to run. I'm pleased with the job it's doing. When you look at the amount of straw here that's not chopped very fine, it's spread it quite evenly. But also there's a bit of loose tilt it's brought up uh, with soil as well which will help the uh, weeds to chit and this area here this is the trial plot we had um, recently uh, with uh, with agri and you can just see this area where we didn't have uh, anything on it you can just see the amount of soil that it actually has moved and you've got a nice friable surface here which is great to help the weeds to chip before we plant the crop. And so I think it's actually doing more than just moving straw. It's actually creating a bit of friable tilth on the top, which is what we need. So today's Saturday. We're putting a cover crop in this trial field. We've had the trial running for six years. This is the machine we built for putting all seed rape in. So the legs loosen it. We've got seed going down those black tubes rubber roller and the DD firming it and then we've got the spring times in front of the second row of DDs or the last row rather creating a little bit of tilt and you can just see there what it's doing mixing the straw and just creating that friable surface that we struggle with in the spring this field's coming spring barley again and we've tried it before where we don't move it at all. We really struggle with establishment because this ground's so solid. 56% clay. And this is the first time we've used this elita, as we've termed it. The elita in Latin means the chosen one. So this started life as a six meter Simba Solo and we've changed it and converted it took a year to do six, seven years ago. So it's a new one this is, doing it this way for us. Normally that machine, the Elite, are only put for raping, but now we're trying cover crops with it. Now it is a little bit late for cover crops, I'll admit, but we only harvested this field a couple of days ago and it's what it is. We can't do anything about it because of the lack of sun. But we've got lovely friable soil surface, so we will roll or press this just to consolidate it to keep the moisture and hope the cover crop grows. And then it will be planted with spring barley without doing any more to it, apart from spraying it off or might even have some sheep on it over the Hooray, sunshine. First time for possibly three weeks. So we started about an hour ago. It's six o'clock Saturday evening in Bali. That has been fit for a long while, but you can actually see some of the ears now are starting to go on the floor. It's necking over there, but it's okay, we'll uh, hopefully get to get the barley finished by sometime tomorrow afternoon, which will be good. We're now putting the pulse press. In the uh, cover crop field, just to try and 
consolidate the ground a bit more than the Cambridge Rolls do and it, it does quite a good job this without the tines in the front you just see here where the rings have chopped and consolidated it all along there so done a good job really so I'm pleased with this field so we've had three passes to establish this cover crop we've raked the straw crossway on to level it out and create a little bit of tilt we've been through with our uh, drill and the press on the back and then we've consolidated it with this press rather than Cambridge rolls so we'll see what uh, effect we have 